Hey everyone, Andy Dorsch here from the Chicago Northwestern Marsh Line layout. Today we're going to be building our first Craftsman Structure Kit, the Rippin Co-op. Alright gang, so the kit that I have here that we're going to be building today is a RailroadKits.com um, Dannon Feed Mill Kit. Um, it's a kit produced by Jimmy Dignan, and I'm just going to pull it apart here, and we're going to show you just all the contents of the kit. So we got some, there's some glass, and here's some plastic parts and window pieces, and then here's the laser cut wood for the sides. So I'm going to just lay it out here, and this is it. All right, first what we want to do is prep all the wood pieces for painting. So I like to rub them with a little steel wool to get that kind of that fur that you can see on uh, some some of the hobby wood so we're just going to go ahead and just gently smooth these wood pieces off we'll do a couple pieces here and we'll also do the laser cut pieces as well because there's a bit of fur on those as well so we'll just keep sanding it down here until all the burrs are gone All right, now that we got everything all smoothed out and ready to go, we're gonna put a wash of gray to simulate weathered wood. So this is not a perfect process. I'm just gonna start here full blown um, ceramic coat or whatever they call it at the, the Walmart craft store paint. We're just gonna glob it on here and then we're gonna hit it with some water to kind of wash it out. So this is not a scientific process by any means, but what we wanna do is just get a nice background of gray so that when we add our final coat of the barn red, you'll see some of the weathering underneath it. So like the wood has been kind of sun baked or starting to rot a little bit. So we don't want a perfectly new building here. So we'll just keep going with the gray, just a little bit of water here, just to kind of thin it out. And then we'll just kind of wash, create this wash to go over everything. And then we'll just add some highlights here. I'm gonna use some darker grays, some lighter grays. Again, this is your time to experiment, so there's nothing that has to be perfect here because we're gonna be covering most of it up. There we go, looking good. All right, I'm just gonna do a little darker here, just in this test area, see how it worked out. I'm not a big fan of it, but I don't think you'll be able to see it from the road. So, on to painting the, painting the red. So I'm gonna use a technique where we use basically a cosmetic sponge. You can get about 50 of these from Target or Walmart for about two bucks, they're in the makeup section. In the pharmacy and I dip it in uh, full strength red paint and then I kind of dry it off to almost create like a dry brush effect and then I just dab it on the wood so as you can see here just taking a little bit I dab it off and then we'll add it to the model and again this isn't a perfect process either because our final weathering that we're gonna go over is really gonna accentuate all the gray and stuff underneath so again just try and get a coat, does, and you don't want it to be even. You want it to be kind of sparse in spots um, to kind of simulate sun fading. So we're just using that, again, using that sponge dab here, and then just cover up the gray, leaving some of it exposed. There we go. I'll hit a spot there. Not too bad. There's our final result. So you can see some of the fading there. Um, it's not uniform. Looks like it's been weathered in the sun. Okay, so now we're going to start cutting up the pieces here and preparing them for assembly. Um, these kits, they come pretty much just cut them apart and slap them together. So what I want to do here is just kind of remove all of the waste wood here and get some smooth surfaces. Just cut off the sprue or what was left behind from the laser process. 
and I'm just using my exacto knife. And trim them all up, make sure they're nice and straight. And there isn't any burrs or little chunks of wood hanging off of them. This one's being a bit stubborn. All right, so we're just gonna trim everything else up here. And we'll have all the kit pieces pretty much cut away and ready for assembly. There we go. One last little tip here that we're gonna show you is I'm gonna sand the edges down um, just to make sure that there's no little spurs or anything from the laser process um, left over. Plus it'll give us a nice smooth surface for our joins. All right, we're gonna do this wall again here. Flip it over and do all sides. I'm using a fairly heavy grit sandpaper, but I'm not pressing very hard. So I'm just kind of lightly scraping it over the sandpaper just so I can get a smooth edge. And then just do it as required. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and take those sticks um, that came in the kit and we're gonna use our template here that they provided and these are going to be the support gussets for the interior walls that will help us in our assembly process. So I'm going to measure them here and get a, use my hobby knife to kind of cut a little groove in it. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and use my chopper to uh, finish the job. So we got it all measured up into the chopper and there we go just like downtown so one done and we'll probably use that one as a guide and let's start chopping away probably need to replace the blade in my chopper as you can see it's kind of having a difficult time cutting through that but we'll trim those up here with a hobby knife make sure I got some nice even cuts. And we'll use another piece here as a guide because we're making a lot of them. And chop off. Ugh. Yeah, I need to I need to replace that blade. It's pretty dull. Alright, so we're gonna clean them up a little bit here. And start to get them set for gluing. So I got my guide stick and we're going to use wood glue here. I just use good old wood glue um, and we'll get some dumped out here and then I'm going to use a toothpick to apply it. That way we're not having gobs and gobs of glue everywhere. All right. So we're going to take our support piece and the toothpick and just kind of, it's like butter and bread. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on and then from there we're going to take a tweezers and place it, I think this was 330 seconds away from the edge of the siding. And then we'll repeat the process here on the other side and those will give some nice supports for us to glue our structure up to. I'm just double check it here with my gauge stick. I'll shimmy it in there and I think, I think we're getting pretty close. Yep, there we go, we got her. Uh, maybe, uh, just a little more, there we go, now we got it. All right, on to the next set here. And we'll speed it up a little bit. As you can see, I got a couple done already.
All right, now that we got those wall pieces and their supports drying, we're gonna finish painting the rest of the plastic pieces. I'm gonna use the same method I used for the side walls. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and use a sponge, but this time instead we'll use some white hobby paint. And I'll just go ahead and coat these. This is the door here and the windows and the door frame all in the white paint. Pretty self-explanatory. Here's second coat here. First one didn't take as always with white. You always got to do two coats. But as you can see here, kind of a weathered white look is what we're going for. All right, so now that the paint has dried on my windows and doors, I'm gonna go ahead and put the glazing in here. So we'll cut them away from the sprue. And as you can see, that knife really needs to have a sharp blade put in it. And we'll just go ahead and remove it from the sprue. And I'm gonna use an emery board here. And we're just gonna get rid of the little sprue nubs that are on, always on the plastic pieces when you cut them away. So I'll make sure that there's nothing left over and I'm just kind of, just like I used on the sandpaper in the sidewalls, just lightly dragging it across the emery board, make sure all the sides are smooth, and then we'll test fit it into the into a window hole here, and look at that, fits perfectly. Alright, so let's just finish the process here. We're gonna go ahead and get the door cut away. And here we go, number four. And the door is free, and I think we're gonna do the same thing here. We'll just go ahead and sand off the nubs just to make sure that there is no uh, unevenness here in the door. All those plastic injection molded nubs that get left behind, you wanna make sure those are sanded away so that way you have a nice smooth surface. Perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take a little uh, um, canopy glue, the, the testers version of that, um, but basically it's for gluing um, clear plastic to plastic and it won't uh, fog up your clear plastic like regular model glue or CA or super glue will. So I'm just putting this on the back of uh, the window pieces and then we'll uh, find my tweezers here. Pick him up and spin him around, and we're gonna drop him right on the on the acetate here, what we're calling the glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and just stick that right to it like that, and then we'll cut him loose after he's dried. So we'll get him set straight. As you can see there, he's stuck to the acetate, and we'll cut him out when he's dried. Let's repeat the process here. Okay, we're gonna start gluing up the side walls here. So we're gonna get out my handy dandy wood glue. And again, we're just gonna use the toothpick and we'll start just kind of dry fit them up here before we get going. And you can see how these pieces will join to each other here. So I put those support pieces in, not just to hold it up nice and straight, but also gives us a good surface to glue to in the corners. So there you go. Doesn't even need glue. Now it needs glue. All right. So why don't we go ahead and load up our toothpick here. Oh, watch out. And we'll just go ahead and drop that on there like that. We'll just smooth it on. Um, don't want to gob it on too bad here because you don't want it squeezing out the edges. So get a nice smooth coat, but don't gob it on. Um, and as you can see, just get it on all the surfaces that are going to be contacted. Um, that'll hold the walls up. So here we are. Got this all ready to glue up. And then you just take, make sure you get it right side up. There we go. And just stick them together like that. Now I'm using the lines on my hobby mat to make sure everything stays nice and square. All 
All right, so now we got our four walls standing up here and I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it up. So it's time here. I got some real tiny quick grip clamps. I'm gonna use those to hold the base in. Get that set like so. And then I'll put one on the other side as well. Just need to make sure this first corner square. All right, using my lines on my hobby mat. And we'll pop in the other clamp here. And yeah, that one's pretty good. Now we're gonna bring in my secret weapon. That's right, we're gonna clamp the top here with a good old rubber band. So I went upstairs in my junk drawer and pulled out a rubber band and I'm gonna use actually a couple of them to hold the top pieces together. Um, the rubber band does a nice job of holding everything in place. And especially if you need to get a clamp in an awkward spot. All right, there's another rubber band. That'll hold the middle. So this is going to conclude part one of our build. Join us next time as we add all the detail parts on the roof. Thanks for watching. This is your first time here, be sure to subscribe.